an Ethiopian refugee camp just outside Magdala. The misery has returned. Once again, the world didn't listen in time. The same mistakes were repeated. Starvation and death cast a long shadow over this land. The refugees flock into the camps by the thousands each day. It's utterly heartbreaking. When Bruce returns to Gotham, he'll send out another check to help the effort and try to forget what he's seen there. He's no different from anyone else. There's only so much even Bruce Wayne and Batman can do. Truthfully, these grim surroundings momentarily cause Bruce to forget the real reason he's there. One look at Jason Todd's features brings it all back to surface. They have to find Jason's real mother. They have one last candidate to interview. Bruce can't fault Jason's impatience. How often in life do you get to meet your own mother for the first time? The two find Dr. Haywood within a medical tent. As soon as she sees Bruce Wayne, she recognizes him as the millionaire Gothamite. As soon as he sees her, he knows that he and Jason have hit pay dirt. Jason's got her eyes. Bruce introduces the doctor to the boy. Oh my god, Jason? She mutters, leaning forward. Jason doesn't think twice and wraps his arms around Dr. Haywood. She flinches. Bruce can see that this revelation has floored her. It's going to take some time to get used to the idea of being a mother again. He watches the two and smiles, assuming now is the best time to make his leave. He drives off, wondering if he's just lost another partner. Within the tent, Dr. Haywood explains to Jason that before she was a struggling medical student, when she met and fell in love with his father. Shortly after Jason was born, she got in trouble when an operation she was assisting on got botched. The incident put an end to her medical career back in the States. Willis, Jason's father, was supposed to join her once she got settled in England. But Jason's dad fell in love with Katherine Johnson before Dr. Haywood could send for him. The doctor thought it best to let them raise Jason as their own. She had neither the funds or any hope of winning custody of Jason in a legal battle. Besides, a custody fight would have been too rough on Jason. Dr. Haywood finally accepted the fact that Willis would probably never let her see her son again. At around 10 minutes till 9.30, Dr. Haywood stands Jason up and escorts him out of the tent, explaining that she needs to get back to work. It's camp business she can't get out of. If Jason can wait for about an hour, in the meantime, Jason can help her with the food dispersal. The boy obliges, but once he steps out of the tent, Jason sees a green jeep roll by. Then, three men step out of the vehicle. One of them, Jason immediately recognizes as the Joker. 
most likely making the other two men his hired guns. Jason watches in amazement as the Joker and his goons stroll into his mother's tent and assumes a situation like this calls for a little eavesdropping. Jason doesn't hear the whole conversation, but he does hear his mother talking about covering something up. Then he hears the Joker's voice. All I care about is getting my hands on that six truckloads of medical supplies. How you arrange that is your problem, sweetie. But remember, if you screw this up, your superiors will learn of the medical trouble which drove you to this rat hole. The Gotham City Police are still rather interested in who performed that sloppy operation on that poor, dead teenager. You've got a good thing going for you here as the chief distributor of medical supplies. Don't mess it up. There is some silence for a moment before Jason hears the Joker speak again. Shall we go to your warehouse then? The Joker asks Dr. Haywood. My drivers are awaiting our arrival. Jason attempts to stay out of view as he trails the madman and his mother to the green jeep. The boy watches as the vehicles slowly begin to kick up dirt and pick up speed, and Jason is left with no other option but to steal a nearby man's motor scooter in order to follow the green jeep and a caravan of trucks to the medical warehouse. Once they arrive, the Joker's men begin unloading boxes from the truck in order to replace the ones they choose to steal. Dr. Haywood cautiously asks the Joker if the boxes are empty, and the Joker responds, no, they contain a mixture of my lethal laughing gas. Just imagine the surprise when one of your bleeding heart social workers opens any of these cartons. Each box contains enough gas to cover a four acre stretch. Just consider it my little contribution to the war against hunger. The doctor sniffs to stop her tears from sliding down her cheek. Oh, don't look so down, Sheila. I'm doing you a favor. Think of it as a way of cutting down the number of mouths you have to feed. The madman then begins to cackle before reminding Dr. Haywood that he likes to leave a mark wherever he goes. Jason becomes resolute vowing to save his mother from the clutches of the Joker. The boy manages to sneak away from the medical warehouse and back to the motor scooter before racing back to the camp. He knows full well that he is in over his head. Instead, he decides that this is a job for Batman and Robin. Luckily, when Jason returns, he runs into Bruce. He quickly tells Bruce what he knows and within a few minutes, Bruce is suited up and tracking down the Joker. Unfortunately, what Batman finds instead is a convoy of famine relief workers taking a load of supplies to a refugee outpost. The trucks will be on the highway in a moment. His Land Rover wasn't made for such high-speed chases. In an attempt to warn the drivers about their deadly cargo, Batman pulls out his minicopter. Before he leaves, Batman looks Jason in his eyes. Take no action until I get back. I repeat, no action. Just for once, please 
Listen to me, Jason. Don't tangle with the Joker alone. Wait for me to get back, please. That madman's just too dangerous for you to handle. Do you read me? Loud and clear, Jason barks. The sound of the helicopter propeller spiraling forces him to speak up. Just hurry back. Batman waves goodbye as the minicopter lifts into the air. Jason waves back, silently apologizing in his mind to his mentor. While Batman is busy with the caravan, Jason will make his way back to the warehouse to save his mother. He finds her exiting a building and lighting up a cigarette. Mom! He calls out to her. Jason? You've got big trouble, Mom. I know all about it. The Joker. Everything. I don't know what you're talking about, Dr. Haywood denies, averting her gaze. Come on, Mom, Jason reasons. Play straight with me. I can help you. There's a lot about me you don't know. The boy unzips his jacket, revealing the red of his uniform. That outfit, Dr. Haywood mutters before immediately pulling him into the warehouse where they will be safe from wandering eyes. She tells him, the Joker is gone. There's nothing to worry about. But I have something else you should see. Just step over here and you'll understand everything, Robin. Robin follows his mother around the corner. That is when the Joker appears. The madman steps forward, pistol in hand, and chuckles as he watches the fear spread across the boy's face. What? Robin shouts, turning back to address his mother. But you said... I lied, the doctor says flatly, lifting her own pistol at the child. You see, I can't afford to have you stirring up trouble. I've been dipping into the medical funds myself. If you blow the whistle on the Joker, the ensuing investigation would certainly uncover my embezzling. Robin is speechless. He does nothing as the Joker's goons walk from around the corner and block his only available exit. The doctor apologizes. Sorry about that, kid. Looks like you chose the wrong person to trust this time. What should we do with him? She asks the Joker. Something I've wanted to do for years. The Joker sneers. The evil clown struts forward and pistol whips Robin hard enough to throw the hero off balance. Robin uses pure strength of will and determination to stay on his feet. But the Joker responds by kicking the boy in the face, which sends him flying to the ground. Oh, come now, bird boy. You're not going to sleep on me already, are you? The party's just got started. The Joker lifts the hero to his feet by his collar. Then let's boogie, Robin yells. He successfully sneak attacks the madman striking the Joker in the stomach when he least expects it. The Joker's goons do not take this lightly. One rushes Robin and punches him back down to the ground. The other puts all his weight behind a strong kick to the hero's ribcage. The Joker finds and grabs a crowbar from off a nearby storage crate and lifts it into the air. He tells Robin, You've been a bad boy. You must be punished. 
prepare yourself for a severe spanking, young man. But let me tell you right from the start, this is going to hurt you a lot more than it does me. The Joker swings down the crowbar with one arm and strikes Robin in the back. The boy howls out in pain. He coughs and chokes on the blood filling his mouth. The Joker strikes again and again, this time with two hands. And again, the doctor watches everything. She can't stand the sight. She can't stand the sound. So she turns around and lights up another cigarette. Elsewhere, Batman is pushing the minicopter to the limit. He's already regretting leaving Jason behind. Something deep inside him is scratching that that was the wrong move. He should have had Jason go after the convoy. But Jason would have only refused to leave his mother. Bruce didn't really have a choice. Suddenly, things get from bad to worse. The troopers guarding the convoy mistake Batman for a hijacker. One of them is lucky on their first shot. The bullet takes out the main hydraulics and an oil line. It's time for Batman to bail out. Fortunately, he finds a nice, soft, trigger-happy soldier to land on. He takes out the other with a drug-tipped dart. As Batman approaches the medical trucks, some of the medical workers recognize him, knowing him to be the hero of Gotham. He explains the situation in record time. Batman needs the workers to unload the boxes and leave them for the army to deal with. Meanwhile, he'll be needing one of their trucks in order to get back to the warehouse in time. The hero curses the loss of the copter. It's going to take him at least 20 minutes to get back to the warehouse. Batman just prays he'll be there in time. Back in the warehouse, the Joker huffs as he attempts to gather his breath. My, that was fun. Kind of messy though. Dr. Haywood winces at the sight of Robin. She asks the Joker what Batman is going to do to them when he finds out what they did to his little friend. The Joker raises an eyebrow before admitting, Hadn't thought of that. He's a vengeful one, that Batman. This could get a bit sticky. Maybe it would be best if I didn't leave behind any evidence of my presence. What the Batman doesn't know can't hurt me. Too bad you had to witness this little display of my temper, Sheila. The Joker signals for one of his goons to grab and tie Dr. Haywood to a nearby structure beam. Dr. Haywood pleads for mercy, reasoning, it won't work, Joker. They'll know it's you from the slaughtered refugees. Perhaps the authorities will figure their deaths were caused by something disagreeable that they ate. Doesn't matter. There won't be any direct evidence connecting me to Bird Boy's death. That's one of the most fascinating aspects of the Batman. The righteous boob insists on solid evidence before going Nova. Fortunately, the Joker never goes anywhere without bringing along at least one explosive device. He instructs his second goon 
to place it at the doctor's feet before telling her that she has 10 minutes and that he'll enjoy the thought of her counting every second of them. For eight minutes, Dr. Haywood cries. She can't believe what just happened. She played it straight with the Joker and he still double-crossed her. But then, to the doctor's surprise, Robin groans himself awake and attempts to push himself to his knees so that he can crawl over to her. Jason? She shouts, bewildered. You're still alive? With a minute and 30 seconds left, she instructs the hero to deactivate the bomb. As the hero drags himself closer, he leaves a trail of blood behind him. In no shape to handle that, he mutters, speaking about the bomb. I gotta get you out of here. I'll save you, mom. There's 57 seconds left, and the hero begins untying the doctor. There, you're free, he tells her. Run for it. Go. There's 39 seconds left, and the hero collapses back on the floor. There's 20 seconds left, and the doctor attempts to lift the hero up to his feet and exit the warehouse. There's 12 seconds left, and they're almost there. There are five seconds left, and the doctor is setting down the hero so that she can open the door. There are two seconds left, and something is wrong. There is one second left, and the doctor tells the hero that the door is locked. Batman is only minutes away from the warehouse when he spots them. The Joker and his goons speeding away in their green jeep. Even at this distance, he recognizes Joker is the driver. The decision must be made. Does Batman go after the lunatic? Or return to the warehouse to see if Jason's alright? He opts for the warehouse. By the time Batman arrives, there is no screaming for help. There is no ticking from a timer. There is no laughter from a madman. There is no explosion waiting to happen. Just the ticking and the clicking of the fire burning everything to the ground. <laughs>